Hi there. One of the first things that people beginning electronics ask me is what on earth is a resistor? Well, the way I usually answer them is you are. Here we have my multimeter set onto the 20 mega ohms range and you can do the same thing. Lip both your fingers, one probe in one hand, one probe in the other, turn your multimeter on and there you have it. 0.29 meg, 0.25 meg I am a resistor, and you are too. So what is a resistor? Well, a resistor is just a conductor, really. Anything that conducts electricity, apart from superconductors, has a resistance. Um, electricity, as we discovered before, is in fact the flow of current from one place to another. And all materials, to some extent, apart from superconductors, resist that flow of current. Some materials, like the plastic that this case is made out of, resist that flow of current very strongly. We call them insulators. That, in fact, is a bit of a misnomer because they still do conduct. It's just the amount of current they conduct is so tiny it's very, very difficult to measure. Other materials, such as the metals, for example, on the end of this probe, conduct electricity far better, and we have a tendency to call them conductors. And in the middle you have materials like carbon, like graphite in your pencil lead, and those we have a tendency to call resistive materials. Because they do conduct, we can measure it quite easily, but they're not very good conductors, just in the way that your body is not a very good conductor. So what do you do with these materials that are resistive? Well, they have their uses. And in reality, resistors are only used for three things. The first use is for protection. They can be used to limit the amount of current that flows through a circuit or indeed a portion of a circuit to protect other components if there's a problem. The second thing is to provide a fixed voltage. It is possible to use resistors, as we shall see in a minute, to provide a number of fixed voltages from a supply. And the third thing that they use for is to provide a fixed current to devices that need a certain amount of current. So let's do a little bit of revision. Now from what we saw in the previous tutorial, current, which is measured in amps, is a measure of flow. It's how many electrons per second are moving through a point. And one amp is an absolutely huge number of electrons moving past a point in a second. Now all materials resist this flow of electrons to a certain extent, some more than others, as we've just discussed. And it's generally those materials that resist a bit more, such as carbon, we'll use as a resistor. And resistance is basically measured in ohms. And the resistance of a circuit when a voltage of 1 volt causes 1 amp of current to flow is 1 ohm. Hence Ohm's law. And um, different materials have different characteristic resistances. And resistors are made of everything from carbon film through to metal film, very, very thin metallized coatings, and even metal resistance wires, which is nickel loaded wire, which is slightly more resistive than copper. And here we have the Ohm's Law Pyramid, which is the easiest way I've found to actually remember Ohm's Law. Just stick your finger over the thing you want to find. So if you want to find voltage, put your finger over V, and you can see it's IR. If you want resistance, put your finger over R, and you can see it's V over I. 
and if you want current put your finger over the eye and you can see it's V over R volts over resistance and it's the easiest way ever that I've found to remember Ohm's law and it's well worth your while just simply remembering V over I R and here's some symbols for resistors at the top left and you can see the fixed value there's two normal symbols that are used different people use different ones they're interchangeable they mean the same thing um, potentiometer which some people would call a variable resistor um, it's not actually a variable resistor until you connect the wiper which is the central terminal to one of the two supplies um, then you've got a photoresistor, a resistor that changes with light, and a thermistor, a resistor that changes with temperature. And it's worthwhile remembering that all resistors change with temperature to a certain amount. Now, if resistors are connected in series, it's quite easy to determine the total resistance. You simply add them together. If, on the other hand, resistances are connected in parallel, it's not so easy because you get a different amount of current down each actual arm of the circuit. Now for however many resistors you have, you just take one over the value of resistance, add that together, and then put one over the total. Um, in this case, one over 1K and one over 1K8, and remember that 1K8 is 1,800, and 1K is 1,000, gives you 642.8 ohms. And mixed connections are just simply a question of adding the two methods together. Now here's a good use for resistors, current limiting. Now for any particular LED, there is a certain maximum current that it will take, and there is a certain voltage that it will drop between the top terminal, positive terminal, and ground. So if we look at the data sheet for this particular LED, we'll see that the forward current absolute maximum is 30 milliamps. The forward voltage typical is 2 volts, maximum is 2.5 volts. We could only afford, if it was in an AC application, to put 5 volts in the reverse direction, but we're running it the right way around, so we don't even need to worry about that. So, what we know is that the LED will drop between 2 and 2.5 volts of the supply voltage. And the worst case for our current limiting example is always going to be the lowest. So we'll always take the lowest. Um, and this will leave us 7 volts from this 9 volt supply to be dropped across the resistor. And the absolute maximum current is 30 milliamps. So we want to derate this in order to make the LED last a bit longer. Um, obviously the less current the better, but we still want to be able to see it. So we're going to take 5 milliamps off and derate it to 25 milliamps. So from Ohm's law, the 7 volts we want to drop through the resistor divided by 25 milliamps is 280 ohms. Now the nearest standard value of resistors is a 270 ohm resistor. We could build one, but we'll take the standard if we can. Um, so 7 over 270 gives us, as near as damn it, 26 milliamps. That's near enough. So we'll choose a 270 ohm resistor. But if the supply voltage was 24 volts instead of 9, what would you use? So 24 minus 2 is 22 volts. 22 divided by our 25 milliamps is 880 ohms. The nearest value is 820 ohms. Um, 22 over 820 is 26.8 milliamps still well under the 30 milliamp maximum so we can use that alternatively we could actually construct a resistor by adding together two lower value resistors to get closer to the actual value that we want resistors are often used to develop a very quick reference voltage um, the easiest way to calculate this is to find the total resistance top to bottom then divide the supply voltage by that so you get a voltage per ohm um, figure and then work from the bottom of the chain to the top so if we look total resistance here is 12320 and um, 
that gives us uh, volt 2 at the bottom would be 1500 1k5 remember is 1500 ohms times the volts per ohm figure 2.92 and then we've got 10k between that and the next one up and uh, we need to add our previous 2.92 to that and that gives us 22.402 the thing you have to remember is that resistor tolerances and the actual temperature effects will disrupt these figures drawing more than a very small amount of current from V1 or V2 will cause the voltages to change um, we'll talk about buffers later when we talk about semiconductors but there are ways of avoiding this heavy current draw um, now an approach to designing a voltage dropper is just simply to um, choose an overall uh, resistance that's quite high uh, in this case I'm choosing say 24k which makes it easy to work out um, and then just calculate each resistor accordingly and if you can't get a standard that's close enough then you can make a resistor um, as I said the top resistor which needs to drop 19 volts in this other application is 19k and there is no 19k standard resistor however we can make it from an 18k7 and a 300 ohm resistor how you do this is up to you um, everything is up to you at the end of the day um, it's not good practice to make uh, exact resistances a requirement if you can possibly get around it um, because you'll end up selecting resistors when you come to build the thing. Now potentiometers do a similar thing to a voltage divider. Um, you have typically you'll have the top of a potentiometer connected to a supply rail or a positive voltage, the bottom connected to um, the negative rail or ground voltage, and then you have a wiper which runs in between the top and the bottom, and because it's a continuous resistive track then you get a variable voltage on the wiper. Now it's not actually a um, rheostat or variable resistor until you connect the wiper to either the top or the bottom. If a potentiometer fails then it's usually an open circuit caused by dust. Um, so you need to think about this. Do you want, if it, if it fails and you get this horrible crackling effect, do you want it to be towards the high end or towards the low end and it's also possible to add other resistors in so that you can stop your uh, potentiometer or rheostat from going all the way to zero in either direction um, so that you don't exceed the power rating of the potentiometer and uh, also to limit the ability of the user if it's a user control to modify the action of your piece of kit. Now here we've got some typical packages. Um, that black thing in the top left is actually about six inches long and that's an example of a 20 watt power resistor wear one wear one thing. Not the sort of thing you'd normally want to solder onto a circuit board although this one does have solder tags on. Um, there's other various different power conventional resistors and there's some surface mount ones in the middle towards the right. And then those things that look like ICs are packs of resistors, multiple resistors in one pack, all of the same value. Very useful for if you've got pull up and pull down resistors on a data bus or something like that. And finally at the bottom you've got potentiometers. And um, these are all the different types you can get, some of which would have knobs on them. And others are designed for internal adjustment and they're typically called trimmers. Well, I hope that was useful. If you want to have a look at the resistor colour code, you can go to arduinotronic.com and on our resistors page you will find um, the colour code for the resistors.